Hey folks, this is Todd Coburn with your Aerospace Structure Series. This lecture is on statics, rigid bodies, and we're going to focus now on equivalent force systems. So just to kind of set our minds to the same level here, let's think back. We started out and we dealt with problems like this. We were given two forces, P and Q, and we were looking for the resultant. What we did was we took P and Q, we used vector addition, and we came up with an equivalent force system, which was the new vector P plus Q. When we're done, we don't have both P and Q and P plus Q. We either have PQ or we have P plus Q. This is an equivalent force system. And we did it and we talked about components because those two components, P and Q, are parts of the vector which can be looked at as two separate vectors or as one combined vector. So P plus Q is the equivalent for system for the vector P and Q. There is no moment since these forces are going through the same point, they are concurrent, and because of this that equivalent for system has only forces, one force in this case, and no moments. Later, we came upon this problem where we had a bunch of forces, uh, F1, F2, F3, F4, the blue forces were applied to an eye bolt. We broke them into components, which is an equivalent force system for each one. We took F1 and we replaced it with its two components, F1, X, F1, Y, which are the components. That's an equivalent force system for that original vector F1. We did the same with the other ve blue vectors and turned them into their components, which was an equivalent force system transformation. And then we added all of those components. When we were done, we ended up with a single vector uh, R, which was the summation of all the components. We took F1 and turned it into its equivalent system. We took F2, turned it into its equivalent system. We took F3 turned it into its equivalent system, and F4 turned it into its equivalent system. We added those components together, which became a new equivalent system, and then we combined those to make the final equivalent system, which was the vector R. We looked at this when we got to couples, and we saw that if we had two forces that were, had, were parallel, equal and opposite, separated by a distance, the force times the perpendicular distance between the vectors is called a couple, and that is equivalent to a moment. We could take that those two couple forces, F and minus F, and replace them with the equivalent moment M. In this case, the equivalent force system is just a moment with no resultant force. So we could take this moment and replace it with an equivalent couple system, which is two forces, no moment, or we could take the two forces and replace them with an equivalent force system, which is simply the moment with no force. When we looked at all of these, if we looked at this particular case, we can see if we sum the force, so we take the original force system, which was two, the couple, two couple forces, we sum our force in the different direction, we find out that those forces sum to zero, but if we sum our moments about any point, we end up with this moment M. That's why it's an equivalent force system. And then we got to problems like this, as we went further with moments, this is uh, some kind of pipe structure with some forces. We resolve those into moments. We see actually these forces, we can either treat these as a bunch of forces and come up with an equivalent force system about any point, or uh, we can uh, try and find the equivalent force system about a specific point. In this particular case, upon closer scrutiny, we see that the 220 forces are equivalent to a couple, or a, which causes a moment about two axes, about this axis and about this axis, about the y-axis and about the z-axis. If you don't remember that, you can go back to that earlier lecture. I think that was lecture uh, six or something. And then we also have this 30 pound couple, which gives us a moment about the negative x-axis. So we took all these forces and we can turn this into equivalent force system, which involves forces and moments. And we found out that this particular system 
was equivalent to three moments. The summation of forces was equal to zero, but the summation of moments gave us these moments. And actually, no matter where we sum forces to come up with an equivalent force system about any point, we will find that we get the same exact force moment system. And the reason is that there's no forces, there's moments, which are free vectors. So that's kind of a review. We're kind of setting our minds for the idea of taking any force system that we get and representing it with a different force system that is identical about some other point. That's what we've been doing, and now we're going to do it even more. We did it before, we found it was simple, and now we're going to kind of do it on steroids, which is still simple, but it's going to need a little more math. And the reason for this is we're going to be preparing our CSLs to deal with more complicated force couple systems. So if we take a look at this, let's look at this leftmost picture, figure A. We have a blob, some kind of rigid body. We have uh, three forces applied to it, F1, F2, and F3. And we, if we want to replace these with an equivalent force system about point O, what we will do is calculate the summation of effects of these on point O. So we'll sum all forces and place them on point O. Then we will sum all moments about point O. And since we're summing all forces on the rigid body, we can place those at O. Since we summed all moments on the rigid body about point O, we place that at point O, and that's an equivalent force system. We replace this force system with what we find. We can do this by looking and first connecting from point O to any point along each vector. Let's focus on vector 1. F1 is going like this. We see from point O to any point on the vector A1, the force A1, uh, F1, excuse me, we're going to define that little position vector from O to the point on that first force, A1, that little position vector we're going to call R1. And we know we can write the moment is just R cross F. So if we take the vector R and we cross it with the vector F, we're going to get the moment that force F1 causes about point O. If we then add that moment to the moment that the other two forces cause, so we take the R2 cross F2, the R3 cross F3, add those to our R1 cross F1, that will give us the equivalent moment at point O. So we can see in figure B, we now have F1 at point O and the moment that is caused by F1 about O, M1. We have the force F2 and the moment that it causes, we move that force. Remember, forces are fixed vectors, which means when we move them, we have to pay somebody off. And the person we pay off is the moment. Moments are free vectors, and once we have something in moment form, we can move it anywhere we want. Force is not so because a force of a certain magnitude will have no moment about any point along its line of axis, but on any other point, it will have a moment that's proportional to the perpendicular distance. Once we have this equivalent set of forces, so force A is the forces system that we were given. We converted that by taking the, applying all forces to point O and calculating all moments of those forces about point O, and that gave us figure B, which has three forces and three moments now, we now find it's easy to put these together. We can just add the forces in vector with vector addition and add the moments with vector addition, and we will get the equivalent force system at point O. We could call this the reduced system because now we have a single force and a single moment at point O. This is what we've been doing, although with simpler problems, we can do it kind of intuitively. With more complicated problems, we may have to go through our cross product. Okay, So all we did here was took the given set of forces and replaced them with an equivalent set of forces about point O. This is a very important idea, and many students come through this part of the class week. And if you come through this part of the class week, 
Everything you build on top of this for the rest of the semester will be weak. And that will go on into your Structures 1 and Structures 2 classes and out into your career. If you take the time to master these concepts today, then it will build, build, build. You'll find the later content is easier. What we're doing here is coming up with the equivalent for a system. Once we're done with this lecture, we'll then go into uh, equilibrium systems, action, reaction, pairs, which is actually just a baby step forward as long as we've mastered this material. Okay, so we already said this. Our basic process is once we start with the forces that are given, in this case figure A, we summed our forces to get the total resultant at point O, and then we summed our moments about point O to get the equivalent moment. That was our process. Okay? If now, looking at that, let's look at this upper right picture. Once we have that system M and uh, R at point O, if we then want to move and come up with the equivalent for a system about point some other point, we can do the same process. We'll sum our forces. Now we're focused on the figure there, uh, the lower right set of figures, the upper figure, is we've got the resultant and the moment. We take the sum of the forces, that's the same sum of forces. We still have R at the new point. But now when we move 2.0 prime, we see we draw a line from the new point, O prime, to the old point, O. That's our vector, our position vector, R. We're going to take that R, uh, or position, actually we're calling it S in this case, S cross that force, big R, and that will give us the moment about that that force caused about point O prime. We also have the original moment, M-O-R, which was at point O, and that moves. So what we're going to do when we get the equivalent force system, we're going to take all the forces we see and put them at the new point. You can see that one, R. We're going to take the moments, put them at the point, and then we're also going to take the, uh, the S cross R and add that to the moment to get a brand new moment, which is the moment about point O prime, which is shown here. And this is shown in vector addition or vector uh, mathematics. The moment about point O prime is simply MO, M of R about O that we had in the earlier figure, plus the S cross R. Got it? Let's... Uh, Okay, so we can. Uh, this brings us to a, a concept that two systems of forces, and when we say systems of forces, we really need forces and moments. Two systems. If we have one system of forces, forces and moments, and another system of forces and moments, and if they can, if this one can be reduced to the same force couple system or force moment system as this one, they're called equivalent systems of forces. Okay. All right. Okay, so here's a little uh, word to the wise. The, an alternate meaning of this statement here is that if we want to find out if two force systems are equivalent, we can pick any point, sum up the one system about that point, get the force and moment there, and then sum up the other system about the same point. If we end up with the same force and moment, the two systems are equivalent. If not, they're different. Okay? That's how that works. All right. All right. So uh, let's see. If the resultant force and couple at O are mutually perpendicular. Okay. So if, so <clears throat> we end up with a force in a moment at a point, right? We can do that anywhere. We can take any point on the rigid body and say, let's sum up our forces here. No, let's sum them up, up here. Let's sum them up here. We can do it anywhere. Pick the point. Sum up all the forces, and then sum, sum up those forces, our position vectors from the new point to any point along each force vector, and take the R cross F for each and every vector, add all those moments together, and when we're all done, we end up with a force and a moment at a point, okay? An equivalent system of forces. Now, once we get to that point, if we find that the force and the moment are mutually perpendicular, which means they're perpendicular to each other, then we can actually move them to a new point and get rid 
of the moment altogether. That means we can move them again. If the force and moment are mutually perpendicular, we can find there is some point somewhere where if we sum the forces about and the system of forces about that point, the moment will disappear and we'll be leaving up with just a single force, equivalent force system that it involves only a force. That's as simple as it gets. And that will be true, that will be possible if that moment and force are mutually perpendicular. If they're not mutually perpendicular, which means the angle between them is not 90 degrees, then that means that you can't get rid of the moment altogether. You're going to have, uh, you're going to be left with both. Okay. All right. So the resultant force couple system for a system of forces will be mutual perpendicular. So if the forces are concurrent, which means these are different stipulations, which if they happen, then we should be able to get to a single uh, force, which because the force and moment is per mutually perpendicular. If all forces on the body are concurrent, which means you can find a point where they all go through the same point. If that's true, then we will be able to reduce that system to a single force and a single moment. They will be mutually perpendicular, which we can actually reduce it to a single force. If the forces are coplanar, which means if all the forces lie in the plane, then that will be true as well. If all the forces are parallel, then we can find an equivalent uh, mutually perpendicular system. Okay? All right. So let's see here. We've got another blob with some forces. And the system of coplanar forces is reduced to a force couple system R and M that is mutually perpendicular. So what this is just doing is reinforcing what we just said. If we look at the upper figure, we have a plane X and Y. We have three forces. And we can come up. Since these forces lie in a plane, we know they're going to be able to reduce to a single force and moment that are mutually perpendicular. Sure enough, we can pick any point. In this case, we pick point O. And we're going to find out R, which lies in the plane, and M, which is perpendicular to the plane. Now, it looks like M is in the plane, but remember, M is defined by the, by the axis that it acts about. So the moment is in, the moment is perpendicular to the plane, which is causing things to happen within the plane. Okay? All right. And once we have found that force and mutually perpendicular moment, since they're mutually perpendicular, we can move them to a new point where the moment disappears. All we have to do to do that is remember that the position vector cross R equals the moment. And so what we need is the position vector. So from the new point, in this case A, to the old point O, that vector, so O minus A, right? That position vector from A to O crossed with the original R will give us a moment. And if we set that equal to the other moment, then we have found, and then we solve for the position, the, the X and Y coordinates of that point then that will give us the moment. So x, r, y. So if we turn this r into components, r, y, and r, x, in figure b here, then x is the x position where that hits the x axis, x times r, y, minus, that's going to give us a moment like this, minus y times rx, that's going to give us a moment like this, is going to be equal to, if we set it equal to that old vector and then solve for those two components, the x and the y, then we will find that that defines the point where the uh, force can be placed and the moment is gone. Okay? So we can kind of see that uh, laid out with components here to the right. In figure B on the right, we can see the two components of the original uh, or of the new force and how summing the moments for that new force are y times x minus, excuse me, x times r y minus y times r x equals that moment. We can see that we now have that equivalent system. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at this on a practical example. So as we move forward, we're going to run into both in this class 
and in three two in our uh, strength classes, we're going to run into a number of problems where we have beams with transverse forces, and we're going to do all kinds of things analyzing those for shear and bending and other things. And before we can do that, we need to be able to work with the forces on the beam coming up with equivalent forces and summing up forces and moments anywhere along the beam. So we have a beam here. If we want to, ref uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this beam, we're going to reduce the system of forces to an equivalent force couple system at A. What that means is we're going to say, hey, we got a bunch of forces on this rigid body. The beam AB is a rigid body. We're going to ignore the reactions at this point at the two constraints. We haven't talked about that much yet. We're just going to look at the forces and we're going to come up with an equivalent system at point A. In order to do this, we're going to need to sum up our forces and put them at A and then sum up the moments that they cause about point A and put that at point A and that's an equivalent force couple system. Okay. We're then going to, after we're done with that part, we're then going to find the equivalent force couple system at point B and then we're going to look for the point on the beam where we can place a single force to represent these, this force system that has no moment. Those are the three things we're going to do. Let's take a look at work. Look, let's take a look at how it works. So if we look here, we're going to start out. What we're going to do is sum our vertical forces. So we sum the force. Now, normally we want to show that we're summing the force in the positive direction. But in this case, we're just summing vector forces. So we're using the right-hand rule which means we really want to identify our coordinate system. Let's call that X. And once we do that, we see OK. That means Y is going to be go up. So we have 150 J is our first vector. And then we have minus 600 J. Then we have plus 100 J, minus 250 J. You add those together and we get the total force. The, re the total equivalent force at point A is 600 Newtons in the negative j direction. We then sum our moments about point A and the way we're going to do this, now we could do this intuitively by just taking the perpendicular distance times the force and being careful to account for direction or we can use our vector product, our cross product, which means since our x vector is going this way we're going to take the r cross up. So we're at point A, we're going to where the 600 vector is so that is got a distance of 1.6 in the positive i. Cross that with a vector, which is negative 600. Plus, we've got 2.8i crossed with positive 100j. And then we've got 4.8i crossed with negative 250j. Got that? Remember, i cross j is going to be positive k. I cross J, excuse me, I cross negative J, I cross negative, I cross negative J is going to be negative K. We've got I cross positive K. That's going to give us positive, excuse me, I plus po cross positive J is going to be positive K. And I cross negative J is going to give us a negative K. Add those three components together and we find out we have a negative 1880 Newton meter about the K as shown here. That's the equivalent force system at point A. Now if we wanted to do this around point B, that's what we're going to do next. Before we do that, let's just think about this. So actually, doing this with the cross product is very safe like we did here, and it's the best way to handle complex problems. We could have just said, okay, we're going to sum our forces in the y direction, right? And we're going to find out what that is. We've got 150 minus 600, that's in the negative y, plus 100 minus 250, and that's the equivalent force that we found here. We can then sum our moments about point A, and we're looking for the equivalent force system. This first one, is 150 times 0, so we're just going to ignore that. Then we're going to have negative 600 times 1.6 plus positive 100 times 2.8, because that's causing a moment in the positive assumed direction, minus 4.8 times 250, because that's giving us a moment in the negative assumed direction, 
we add those up and we get the same value, we find it's a negative moment, which means it's the opposite direction that we assumed. So that is another way of doing this by intuitively summing those forces and moments. Okay, let's go to point B, part B. Now for this one, we're going to try and find the equivalent force system at point B. Now we could go back to the original system with the forces that were applied and do the same process as last time, but now summing the moments about point B. Or we can take this new equivalent force system and sum that at point B. We're going to sum the forces in the vertical. We're going to find out that 600 newtons goes to the right on the, at point B. And then we're going to sum our moments, which means if we assume this is positive, we're going to get 600 times the length of the beam minus that 1880, and that's going to give us whatever that moment is. So first, this first part sums the forces. The second part takes that R, which is negative 4.8 crossed with minus 600J, and we then add that moment to the other moment, and that gives us the new moment. Now, this third part of the problem, we're looking for the point where the sum of the uh, moments is zero. We can do this by just solving the problem, starting with our, our equivalent forces that were at point A. We can just say, well, R cross A is going to be equal to zero. And when we say R, what we're going to do is be going um, that R cross uh, a, we're going to be going in the positive I, negative J is going to be equal to that same moment, equal to that negative 1880, and solve that system to find that that occurs. We solve for the X component, we find that that's a 3.13, okay? All right, we're actually going to go into uh, some other principles in a later lecture that really will make us even stronger in this. But we should be able to do this quite readily after this. Here's another problem, and what we're looking for is the equivalent force system, force couple system, at point A. All this means is we look at this problem, we've got three force vectors. So first we're going to write each of these vectors as ij components. So we can see we've got our first one at point, uh, let's say point B. We can turn that into a force where we're going to calculate the I, J, and K. We can use the direction of, of that line, the direction cosines of that line, right? Find the two endpoints, find the unit vector, turn that into a total length. Once we have the unit vector, multiply it by the magnitude, the 700, that gives us the vector force. We do that for the other two forces as well. Then we add all those three forces together, take the vector components, I, J, K, of those three vectors, add them together. That will give you the equivalent force at point A. And then we can take the sum of the moments about point A, which means we're going to take the line segment, A, C, which looks like it's uh, 0.075i minus 0.05k crossed with the vector at C is going to give us the moment that that causes about point A. And then we're going to take this line segment AB crossed with that 700, and that AD crossed with that 1200, and then add those moments together. That will be the equivalent moment to point A. Let's see how that works. This is talking about our basic strategy that we just talked about, and now here's how it works. We first look at our directed line segments. This is B from point A, which I like to call AB, which means we take point B and subtract point A. This is RC slash A is the position vector to C from point A, which is the same as saying position vector AC. And D from A, which is the same as AD. Those are those three position vectors. We then turn our forces into vectors, as we learned how to do. And then we're going to take the cross product, I believe, on the next slide. Oh, now first we sum our forces together, and then we take our cross product. And 
Once we add those together, we get the force couple system. Remember, force couple system just means the force and moment that's equivalent at a certain point. Because couple is just a fancy word for moment. It draws attention to the idea that a moment can be replaced with a two forces that are equal and opposite, separated by a distance. Let's look at one more thing. This is uh, actually looking forward to what we're going to be doing when we get into structures too. One very common engineering problem, uh, not quite as common as the beam stuff we were working with, but very common, is when we have a fastener pattern like this. This is just a plate which has a bunch of bolts of different sizes attached to something else. When we're doing this kind of analysis, we're going to find out our first step is we're going to have to find the CG, and I'm going to tell you where the CG is. We can see we've got the X and the Y coordinate here. We can see where the position of the bolts are and where the position of the force is. And I'm telling you here that the CG is located 0.4655 to the right of point bolt 1, and point uh, that's uh, 3.5 inches above point the bolt 1. And what we're going to need to do be, for solving these problems is first turn, move the forces to the centroid of the bolt pattern. That means we're going to need to come up with an equivalent force system at the CG. So we can apply our new method. Basically, we're going to take that sum of the forces in the y direction. There's no force in the y direction, so that's going to be zero. We're going to sum the force in the x direction, which means we're going to take the 16 kips and put it at the CG. And then we're going to sum the moments about the CG. There's only one force, so we can just take a position vector r cross f, which is from the center of bolt 1 to 16. That looks like it's going to be 6i plus 10j crossed with that 16 uh, kips, which is in the positive i direction. Or we can do that intuitively like this. Some force in the vertical, those are all zero. Some force in the x direction, 16 kips. Some of the moments about the CG, which means we're going to have, let's see, the... Uh, that's going to be 10 minus 3.5 times 16. That's going to be that moment. So 10, which is from here to here, minus 3.5, that leaves us this distance, right? That's that distance times our 16 kips. That is 104. That's going to be 104 inch kips. Okay, got it. And then when we are done with that, we can redraw our problem, draw the force and its magnitude, draw the moment and its magnitude. And this is incorrect. This is 104.0 inch kips. And I showed the direction here, and I'm showing the direction here up here as well. That's our answer. We would box that in like this. Got it? So, that is how we come up with equivalent force couple systems. This is how we come up with equivalent force system. If we say come up with equivalent forces at a certain point, what we mean is forces and moments, the force couple system. Sometimes we'll say force couple system, it's come up with equivalent force and moment, come up with this equivalent force system, that involves both forces and moments, whatever we find, needs to be accounted for properly. So study this out. Try those problems on your own until you can do them. Get a copy of Beeren Johnson or Hibbler or Miriam Crage. They'll have a number of example problems and problems with answers in the back, and you can practice on some of those. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe and I'll be adding practice problems, more solved examples here as well. Got it? Enjoy.